And joining me now is Tevi Troy, CEO of the American Health Policy Institute. Tevi, what's your immediate reaction to this bill? Well, I think Nancy had the, the right take on it, that it is a compromise from where the House was. Look, the Senate has a difficult problem in that they are trying to pass a bill where they know that they have 48 votes against it. So you've got to be able to pass something that has 52 and doesn't lose many of those 52. They can afford to lose two, and Vice President Pence would then provide the, uh, the vote. But overall, my take is that this does a lot of things the Republicans are trying to do. The Obamacare had a lot of unpopular taxes and mandates. It gets rid of the taxes. It reduces the mandates. It maintains pre-existing conditions. It cuts spending. It cuts taxes, as I said, and it cuts uh, the, the overall deficit. So I think that's what they're trying to do, but also in the context of trying to bring down premiums. Uh, we don't yet know the CBO score on this. The CMS actuary did score the House bill and said that, that it would reduce the cost of premiums. Because I think the Republican approach is let's make premiums lower rather than subsidizing more people. It's just a difference in approach. Mm. We don't know those CBS, the CBO scores. We're expecting them possibly next week. But when you look at this and health experts look at this, what will they be watching for? Um, I, I think the stabilization fund is something to really look at. Uh, one of the problems with the Affordable Care Act is that you had people dropping out, meaning insurers dropping out and not being willing to offer their services. And the stabilization fund is one way that the Republicans are going to try and keep insurers in the game in the short term while they hope that their overall reforms do, as I said, try and reduce the, the overall so cost of premiums and the overall cost of health care. So I think that's one thing to look at. Uh, the pre-existing conditions thing is, is complicated. Uh, the, the bill definitely maintains existing pre-existing condition uh, protections. But there are there may be some back doors on that and some some questions about the extent of those protections. So I think that's another thing to look at. Also, Medicaid they are um, they're reducing Medicaid's funding overall over a long time, but there's a long phase out period for those reductions in, in funding. So I think those are some of the key things I'd be looking at. Tevi, when you talk about sort of the health care system across the country and how many places there's really only one health care provider, not a lot of choice, uh, and in some places those numbers are even dwindling. What, when you're looking across the landscape here with health care, if this bill, let's say, doesn't pass, how will Americans be impacted when it comes to health care coverage? Uh, well, if it doesn't pass, look, we, we've had high premium hikes uh, in the Affordable Care Act exchanges and the ACA exchanges, and we have uh, less services in those ACA exchanges in terms of insurers dropping out. So uh, doing nothing is not an option. The Republicans are saying, OK, we know that the Democrats aren't going to work with us. What can we do with 52 votes in the Senate? And this is their attempt to cobble together a compromise. They're also doing it within the limits of the reconciliation package and the reconciliation process. The reconciliation process doesn't let you do everything, only things within the budget window. So not everything Republicans want to do, including things like tort reform and purchase across state lines, which would be uh, have a positive impact on reducing insurance premiums, those things can't be in this bill because of the reconciliation process. And so when you're talking about people with pre-existing conditions, do you think that they could lose some of their protections? So if you look at the initial talking points on the bill, the Republicans say that you would not lose pre-existing conditions. The bill's just out, so I haven't done a deep enough dive to see what, what it would do in that regard. And also, uh, I want to see what CBO says would happen on pre-existing conditions. So uh, the Republicans definitely wrote it so that there would be pre-existing protections. We just don't know the extent of those protections. Have you had a chance to look at how this will impact mothers, the health care costs for women uh, who become mothers? Uh, you know, I, I was surprised at that number. I, I think that Nancy was saying about uh, something like 48% uh, of births are subsidized via Medicaid. I, I just am surprised that so many births are subsidized via Medicaid. That gets beyond the notion of, uh, of safety net, I think, and it, it's almost a, an expectation level. So it's um, uh, so, so I think there will be some, some questions in there. Um, I, I don't know what the overall average cost per mother is, and I don't know if there's a, a, a way to assess that, but, but it's definitely something worth looking at. Tevi Troy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.